everyone, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us from wherever you're watching in Kenya, East Africa, and across the amazing African continent. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Now, Kenyans are savoring the victory brought about by the hard work, talent, and sheer determination of Kenyan athletes who have once again won continental glory and fame by dominating the African cross country championships in South Africa. Kudos. But even as we salute our athletes, we have to bring to the attention of the nation the alarm bells ringing from our soccer fields. We have to tell our soccer fans it is time to stand up and be counted. It's time to exercise responsibility and maturity. The violence witnessed after the Gormahia AFC Leopards match at Nyayo Stadium has taken us a few steps backwards and it should serve as a warning to both the government and our sports fraternity that it is time to restore order in our soccer affairs. This week also, Kenya awaits the arrival of Britain's Parliamentary Under Secretary of State at the Commonwealth Office, Henry Bellingham, in the wake of the debate on the alleged forged UK letter on the ICC suspects. Now, the visit comes on the backdrop of the ICC's epic ruling last week, its first since its inception 10 years ago, in which Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga was found guilty of war crimes, including the conscription and use of child soldiers. And the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission right here in Kenya uh, has made an announcement. 4th March 2013 it is as the date for the next general election. Now this has provoked mixed reactions. Reasons have been fronted both for and against that date. We bring you some of these reactions in just a short while. But tonight this also informs the basis of our question and we ask, do you support IEBC's 4th March 2013 election date. Do you support IEBC's 4th March 2013 election date? Yes or no? As always, do start with a yes or a no for your vote to count. Give us a reason why your name and location is always appreciated as well. Right now, let's take a look at uh, our top stories tonight. As we've mentioned, Kenyan athletes shine yet again as female runners sweep all podium places in the Africa Cross Country Championships. And it's tragic. Highway carnage. Ten people, including eight family members, perish in grisly Ahero accident. We're also looking at the date with the ballot. Reactions flow fast and furious over the IEBC's choice of the election date. That's coming up. And flames of anguish, it's a race against time to save huge tracts of forest land in Mount Kenya and the Abadeh as we look at that critical situation. Just a pin number away, how M-Pesa has revolutionized Kenyan lives while winning international accolades. We tell you all about that. Cracking the running mate headache tonight, that's on the Kibaki Succession series. And on Who Owns Kenya, we feature Gulf Energy Limited. Well, tonight we have all this. And as always, we have much more for you as well. You are watching Sunday Live. I'm Julie Gishu. Well, we begin this Sunday Live Bulletin with news that Kenyan athletes have once again confirmed their dominance in long distance races after scooping an impressive six out of eight titles available during the second edition of the Africa Cross Country Championships in Cape Town, South Africa. Our reporter Jeffrey Washira was at the Western Cape Cricket Club in Cape Town and he saw Africa's athletics history rewritten once again in Kenya's favor. He tells us all about it. The first race of the day was the six kilometer junior women. Kenya suffered a blow after Alice Aprot pulled out due to injury. <laughs> Nevertheless, world junior cross-country champion Faith Chemgetich 
showed her dominance after sprinting in the last kilometer to emerge the winner. If I'm not mistaken, we'll confirm that just now. Second place went to Agnes Tebet, while Nancy Tepkeme was third. The absence of a prot meant that Kenya could not retain the overall title in that category. Well done to Kenya. <laughs> In the 8km junior men, Kenyans faced steep challenge from Ethiopians and Eritreans. 2011 champion Jafet Korila was almost taking top spot but was overtaken by Mukhtar Idris of Ethiopia in the last 50 meters. Well done, and that is Mukhtar yeah. Idris. Oh well, Justy. He finished second ahead of Justin Cheriot. <laughs> However, Kenya retained the overall title in that category. Kenya showed her dominance in the 8km senior women after our athletes swept the first four positions. Joyce Echepkurui led the pack, followed by Margaret Wangari. That place went to former World Cross Country Champion Emily Tebet, well, Esther Chemutai was fourth. And that goes to... Yes! Okay, tactics here to work. Although I took what Mepanga, Nanya and Apiga were Kwanza, Nanya and Apiga were Piri. Because I knew I'm a front runner, I have to Kwanda better. Kupabana na warako wa wengine, wakajua wakaya nyuma yangu. Dio wakati tumesha wa withdraw, dio sasa tugeweza Kwanda. The team also retained the overall title. The icing on the cake, though, was in the 12km senior race, where despite stiff competition from Eritrean Teklemaria Medin, Clement Lagarde helped Kenya retain the individual title after finishing in 35 minutes and 43 seconds. Kenya managed to retain the overall title in the senior race. The national anthem was played a record six times. Despite the presence of Ethiopian and Eritrean athletes, Kenya has continued to show its dominance in the cross country because it has lost only two out of the eight titles it won last year. Geoff Rwashira, Citizen TV, Cape Town, South Africa. We're back to Kenya and 10 people, eight of whom belong to one family, perished today after the matatu they were traveling in was involved in a tragic road accident near Ahero. The eight family members were part of a group of mourners headed to another family funeral in Kendu Bay when the driver of a lorry ferrying groceries to Kisumu is said to have lost control of his vehicle. The lorry rammed into the oncoming van. Nine people are still receiving treatment at the new Nyanza Provincial Hospital. Evelyn Wamboy reports on an accident that has once again placed the spotlight firmly on the country's poor and disturbing road safety record. The tattered metal frames of what was once a PSV van are towed away from the road, as is this lorry. The extent of damage to the two vehicles involved in a head-on collision on the Katitu Oyugis Highway near Ahero Nyando in itself telling ever so graphically of the tragedy behind the wreckage that left 10 people dead. But maybe even more tragic was the story told to an already shocked village that eight of the ten who died were members of one family who were on their way to attend another funeral in Kendu Bay. Edwin Bourne and his wife are among the eight who perished in the tragic accident. And for Florence Ateno, their daughter, as with family members gathered at their humble homestead, it is a double tragedy and huge loss most are yet to come to terms with.
sasa wao ndio walikuwa wanapiga simu wakieleza fulani fulani ameshaaga fulani fulani ameshaaga ana bernade ana bernade ana and so another funeral service is prepared so soon after the one that preceded it, after the driver of a lorry carrying groceries lost control, ramming into the oncoming van and throwing the Keyeko clan into further confusion and mourning. Nine others injured in the accident have since been admitted at the new Nyanza Provincial Hospital. Evelyn Ombwe, Sunday Live.